What's up, everybody? Anton here from dropshiplifestyle.com, coming to you from our little studio out here in the Charlotte area of North Carolina, where I've been spending the better part of two days thinking a lot about profitable product selection for 2024, and really thinking about how I can best try to share with you what goes in to picking profitable products that you can actually make money with should you want to build an e-commerce store using the dropshipping model. So what I did is put together a presentation in Keynote. I'll open it up in just a minute. But I also wanna let you know that I would definitely encourage you to stick around and watch this whole thing because I know right now as we go into 2024, the economy is definitely not what it looked like a few years ago and people are kind of scared for the future. People are looking for opportunity to build another stream of income. People turn to things that don't cost a lot of money to get started with. For example, selling on Shopify and drop shipping products. But unfortunately, when it comes to product selection, a lot of people kind of just rush into it and they don't do the research required. And what that leaves them with is basically a store that doesn't have a chance to succeed. Because if you don't have the right foundation, which would be your niche, your product types, then nothing else really matters. So what I'm gonna do is cover what I think will be most helpful for the most people out there that do want to create a second stream of income, possibly replace their own income by using the drop shipping model and We do that on Shopify, but in reality, you could use any platform. I still recommend Shopify. I love them, but use what you will. What you're seeing on the screen right now is my seven-step dropship blueprint. And again, what we're going to be talking about today all lives in step one niche selection, because again, that is the foundation. And the way I wanna share this with you today is by going through five steps to profitable niche selection. So first we'll do a little overview of what's gonna be covered, and then we'll dive into each of them individually. But first, I'm gonna be sharing my niche selection criteria. This is what I look at myself whenever I'm evaluating a new idea. Then we're going to cover focused brainstorming, so you can get a list of ideas that you can then put through a series of tests. So in step three, we're gonna be covering those tests. I call this market research, and this is extremely important and something most people don't know, so they totally skip over. Again, you wanna know what you're gonna do has a high probability of success. Market research is how we know that. After that, I'm gonna talk about niching up, what that means and how to do that. And then I'm gonna talk about how to think like a marketer, because the people out there that are making this business model work, or really any business model work, aren't just doing it by getting lucky. They're thinking about things a very specific way before they decide what to get into, and I'll be sharing that with you as well. But when it comes to our niche selection criteria, these are things that I'm gonna share with you now, because I want you to be aware of these before you start brainstorming ideas for things you could possibly sell and research later on in this video. So let's go through them. And these are things that really are non-negotiables for me. If I'm going to build a store, all these things need to be true. First being that the price point, meaning the price you would list these products for on your store, should be above $200. Because you want to be sure if you're going to sell something, there's at least some money to be made. Instead of selling products for $30 or $40, where you make a few bucks per sale, let's make real money every time we get a sale by having high price points and selling more expensive products that guarantees that. Next thing, brand loyalty. I want there to be none, meaning I want to sell products that people don't care where they come from or what name is on the box. An example would be the stand-up desk I'm at right now. When I bought it, I wanted to find something that was the right size, the right depth. I wanted to find something that went high and low enough, and that was all I cared about. Don't care about what name is on it. I honestly have no idea which company makes this desk. Those are the types of products you want to sell if you want to build a high-ticket dropshipping business and start to list out niches that you could sell in. Next thing, extremely important, is the target demo, the target demographic. We only want to sell products that appeal to the upper middle class. Reason being, going back to the little effort and big results, I have sold products in my over 10 years of experience in this business that appeal to lower income households. And I've sold products that appeal to the ultra wealthy. I'll tell you, on both ends of those spectrums, customer service required to run the business is much higher than in the middle, the upper middle class. They are the perfect shoppers. They're used to buying online. If you choose the right type of products, there's not much pre-sale or post-sale support required. So you have a much easier business to run, much less issues popping up. That is what I choose. That is what I would recommend you choose as well. Okay, so if you're taking notes, maybe pause this right now, write those things down, because now we're gonna move into step two two of this process, which is focused brainstorming. 
Now here, you literally can get out a pen and paper. I literally have note cards all over with different ideas on them. I also use the Notes app in my phone and have thousands upon thousands of ideas. And these are all ideas that I'm not finding by Googling products to dropship, but I'm finding through literally just living my life in the day-to-day -day world. So some examples you can use to start brainstorming ideas and making your list could be looking back and thinking, what are the last five items you've purchased? You can you know, try to remember, you can go back and check your credit card statement. What have you bought? And again, try to think back to what we just went through. That's above $200, because that's gonna make our research easier later on. Now, other than that, you could think about your own hobbies or hobbies of family and friends and the products related to those hobbies and add them to this new list that you are brainstorming. Even right now, as you are watching this or listening to this, look around and see what is the most expensive item near you right now. Now, for me, honestly, it's probably this desk again. I'm looking around and besides my computer, which again, I'm gonna write off immediately because I know that if you're gonna buy a computer, you're gonna buy from a few main brands. There's definitely brand loyalty there. So for me, it would be the stand-up desk. I would add that to my list. Also, what about at your job? Where do you work? Do you work at a gym where you can add different pieces of fitness equipment to your list? Do you work at a medical office? I don't know, as a receptionist where there's different equipment there, even things like the reception desk or the seating in the lobby. People have opportunity everywhere, all around them every day, but if you don't know to look for it, then it simply goes missed. So that is where I want you to brainstorm ideas from, not from simply thinking, let me go online and see what products I should sell. And the reason I say that is not because all products you find when searching for products to sell are bad, but it's because the majority of what you find when you do that are nothing more than middlemen who say, give us some money, you'll get access to these products to sell. And then you find out quickly that by the time you try to mark them up, there really is no room. The profit has been squished by that middleman and that is no way to ever try to make money drop shipping. Even I couldn't pull that off. You wanna be able to work directly with brands and the way you could find them and the niches is by doing this focused brainstorming. Now, I'll show you one more thing here, just in case anybody is stuck and you can't find anything to write down for some reason. Um, you could simply go to Wayfair.com. If you're not familiar with this website, they're a multi-billion dollar publicly traded company that is almost entirely run on the dropship model. And one way to get niche ideas is to literally go through their categories and subcategories. For example, if you click into outdoor and shop all, you could see all these different ideas that could be added to your niche list. Outdoor and patio furniture, outdoor shades, garden, outdoor heating, hot tubs, saunas, pools, all these different things can be added to your list to research later on. And while we're on that topic, we do not build stores like Wayfair that sell pretty much everything. Instead, what I do and what our students do is build niche specific stores not selling one product, but selling one product type, because that gets us much higher conversion rates, allows us to become the authority in the niches we build stores in, and really leads to a much healthier lifestyle business. And if you don't know, the name of this channel is Dropship Lifestyle. The name of my company is dropshiplifestyle.com. And it's because our goal is to build lifestyle businesses that can get us, again, big results for little effort. So niche specific stores. Okay. Moving on to the next step of the process of picking a profitable product type to sell, we're gonna talk about market research. Now here, there are a few different things we look for. The first thing is competition. And for competition, what we wanna see is less than 10 stores selling the most popular products in our niche or our future niche, our idea that we're researching. And the reason we do this test at the product level is because any niche you think of, there are gonna be many online stores selling in that niche, which is fine. We don't care about that type of competition because we're not getting traffic, meaning website visitors, for these general terms. Again, stand-up desk example. We're not getting traffic for standing desks. We'd be getting traffic for the brand names and the product names and the SKU numbers that we sell. So we care about competition for the most popular products. Now, next test we do is the demand test. And for this test, we are looking for more than 10,000 average monthly searches. The reason we do this test is to make sure there's enough people out there actually interested in this niche idea we have so that we can say, okay, this is worth our time. Because if we do this work, there'll be enough people that can find us, become our customers, allow us to earn a living from this business. So the next thing that we check in our research is for seasonality. And here we want there to be none. 
especially for your first store, we wanna choose something that is going to sell year round because I've seen this happen before. People will launch a new store, they'll do everything right. And sometimes unknowingly, they will launch, basically mean build their store, going in to the busy season for a seasonal niche. They will do great, they'll have an amazing few months and they'll think, okay, I can quit my job now, I am set. And then what happens is the season changes, the demand drops off a cliff, sales disappear at no fault of the store owner just because people aren't buying for X amount of months until it picks up again. So if you're a first store, I want you to build something that can earn you money year round. So we look for no seasonality. And the final thing we look at when it comes to market research is the product size and weight. Now there is nothing wrong with selling large and heavy items that are expensive to ship, but the key question is, does the product price and profit margin justify the free shipping cost? So I'll give you an example of sofas. There are many different types of sofas, right? You have $200 futons, you have $2,000 modern leather sofas, and you have $10,000 custom-made Italian leather sofas, right? So all sofas, but very different price points. Now, they're probably all going to cost a similar amount to ship because they're all large and they're all heavy. But if you're selling the least expensive one, in this case, the futon, there is no room to pay for shipping if you wanna offer free shipping because it's only $200 to begin with. On the other hand, that $2,000 sofa, most likely your wholesale cost would be 1,000. You would have 1,000 left over. You could pay for $300 for shipping and have $700 profit on that sale. That is what you want. So don't sell large and heavy items if the price point is too low. Low. Now, once you do these tests, you will have hopefully some niches that pass them all that you can say, okay, let me proceed with this. But you also might have some that don't. What do you do with the ones that don't? Do you just write them off? You could, but what I would encourage you to do is niche up, down, or sideways to expand your list. So I'll give you some examples here of each of these. For niching up, let's just say originally you had bookshelves on your niche and you found that it didn't pass the criteria that we just went through. Okay, well maybe now you want to niche up a level. So instead of bookshelves, you can now go to home storage. Let's say to niche down, you start looking at furniture and you realize that that is just way too broad of a niche. There are too many people selling the most popular furniture products, for example. Well, okay, let's niche down. Maybe furniture now becomes bedroom sets and you decide to build a bedroom set store. Now, niching sideways, let's just say initially on your list, you put fishing rods, that was something you were considering, but then you realized the price point was under $200. Okay, well maybe now you can niche sideways and build a trolling motor store. These are the type of things you can think about instead of just saying, well, I'm out of luck, nothing works, to get better results, to expand your list, to have more to research, and to be well on your way to building a profitable store in 2024. Now, before we get into the last section, Think Like a Marketer, I also just wanna share that next week on Monday, I am planning on putting out a brand new video that's going to share the top 10 niches for 2024. And that video is gonna use everything we just talked about as far as research, plus some more methods that I'm gonna share in that video. So if you're interested and you want the top 10 niches for 2024 and you're not subscribed to this channel already, my advice would be to do that. Just click the little subscribe button, click the bell, you'll get notified on Monday when that goes live. And also, if you are interested in that, type niches in comments. And when I post that video, I will reply to your comment with a link to it. So type niches in the comments if you want a reminder when that video goes live on Monday. So the final thing I wanna cover here is how to think like a marketer. And this is very important for people that are here right now, because again, they haven't built an online business before, they want a second stream of income, they really wanna do this. What I want you to just understand is that this business model, right, that we've been using now for over a decade, and for really most business models out there, they all work, okay? So it's not like, oh, this thing is a trash business model, I mean, some are obviously better than others, but they all work if the person that is behind the business puts in the work and puts in the effort. And I'll tell you, the best marketers in the world, the ones that call it win in business, are the ones that actually put the time in with the research. So I went through our niche criteria, right? I showed you how to go online to one of the biggest dropshipping sites in the world to find more ideas, showed you how to niche up, down, and sideways, and shared some research information that we look for. And all of that, right, is actually important because I know a lot of people will see this and might think, okay, cool, Anton said, look for the most expensive item around me and see a whiteboard and say, I'm gonna sell whiteboards because that's one of the things that was mentioned in this 
video I just watched. But the truth is what I do and what, again, the best marketers in the world do is go deep into the research, okay? Spend time there. I know we all wanna make money as soon as possible. And the truth is you can build one of these businesses and actually start getting traffic in as little as 21 days. But if you don't do this research up front and you don't choose the right niche, again, getting traffic doesn't matter. It might as well be put off for 10 years because it's not gonna turn into a profitable business. So when I say think like a marketer, what I'm really saying is if you need to, go back, watch this video again. Go back, watch other videos on my YouTube channel. I've been posting them here for almost a decade now. And if you have any questions, ask them below because I want you to think about this process analytically, not just jump into something hoping it works because when people People do that. If they don't get results, they give up and never try again. And I truly do want you to be able to build a second stream of income or even replace your own. So guys, that will do it for this video. As always, if you got value, please do leave a thumbs up. And again, be sure to subscribe and type niches below so I can message you on Monday when I release the top 10 niche list for 2024, which I'm going to get to work on right now. So I'll see you later, guys. Bye.